Hey guys and gals, Vlad here with AVT Astro and today we are looking at what's in my eyepiece case and if you stick around for long enough we'll take a look at organizing all of your telescope accessories in their own respective cases. For those of you that might not be familiar, I run a little astro blog called avt-astro.com and of course this YouTube channel, so if you're not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Over the years, I've had the privilege of owning over 100 scopes, more accessories than I could count. And let's get down to looking at what's in my eyepiece case. Alrighty guys, so anyway, I've had the request to make this video for a while already from several people. Uh, it's just kind of been on my back burner. But anyway, let's get into it. Um, what's going on in my eyepiece case and you know how do i actually use this thing first of all i'll start by talking about the case itself so this is a pelican 1600 case i love pelican cases they're super durable super rugged i mean you know i'm not the first guy to use this case right i mean <laughs> pelicans are pretty well known brand um but anyway awesome awesome cases um they are totally waterproof i mean i'm pretty sure i could throw this thing off a cliff and my stuff would probably be pretty safe in it um my favorite sizes is uh, the Pelican 1600, which is this case here. It is a little bit heavy, you know, if you're fully low, if you fully loaded up with stuff. Uh, the Pelican 1550 is another great option. I'll have links to, you know, the cases and, you know, in the description below. Uh, while we're kind of talking about the case itself, I will point out that either the Pelicans or any of these waterproof type of cases, um, you do need to make sure that um, uh, if you use it, right, and it's dewy outside or, you know, it gets moisture in there, that you do, you know, like leave it open to dry because, um, you know, naturally, you know, since it's waterproof and it doesn't let water inside which is good you know um it also doesn't let water out though so that's one thing you know that i did just want to kind of mention briefly okay so anyway get into uh what's actually in the actual case um so explorer scientific is my preferred uh eyepieces you know i've got you know like basically that they're kind of my primary ip especially when i go to star parties and that type of deal uh, the 40 millimeter, uh, 68 degree, that's kind of my, you know, like optimizing the max field of view eyepiece. I love this thing. I use this thing a lot. Um, and then I have the 100 degrees. So I have the 25 millimeter, the 14 millimeter, uh, the 9 millimeter, and the 5.5 millimeter. Um, awesome, awesome eyepieces. You know, like... Um, while I'm kind of going through this video, I'll have links to other videos because I don't want to make this video like 14 hours long. Um, so I'll, I'll link a video why I chose Explorer Scientific um, instead of um, Teleview, you know, the Ethos eyepieces. Um, and so realistically with these five eyepieces, right, which are my primary like deep sky pieces, you know, this will cover me for pretty much any scope that I'm using. So, um, you know, I could grab this case and I could use this with any scope that I have and it covers a very wide magnification range. So that's really cool. All right, next up guys. So I've got a red uh, flashlight in here um, and this one's actually red on white. Um, you know, flashlights, a must, you know, especially for star parties and that type of deal. Um, you know, a nice LED one is always good to have. Uh, going down the list here, um, I've got my Bino Viewer eyepieces. So that's, you know, to be used with the uh, Denkemeyer Binotron that I have. Um, this is, you know, about as you know good of a bino viewer as you could get it. It's got a power switch, got a filter switch. But anyhow, I've got the 3D eyepieces for that. You know, while I'm kind of talking about those, I've got a neutral eyepiece um, for this. Um, and then these are my uh, Batter Classic Ortho. So um, in a lot of cases, you know, when I'm using the Bino Viewer, I'm doing deep, or not deep sky, <laughs> I'm doing planetary observing, which is, you know, when I want to use Orthos because they're very sharp. Um, and you don't really care about a wider field of view. These are around a 50 degree field of view. So I've got a pair of 18 millimeters. We've got a pair of 10 millimeters and a pair of six millimeters in those. Now, if I'm uh, experiencing some particularly good scene and I need more power, I do have a, um, the Batter Classic uh, uh, Barlow lens. So this doubles the magnification of, uh, you know, pretty much any inch and a quarter eyepiece. So I could, you know, basically turn these six millimeters for solo observing, not, not with the bino viewer, um, into a three millimeter essentially as well. Uh, this guy here, this is for the Binotron. This allows you to reach focus with any telescope. Uh, I won't really get into that. 
Um, I do kind of have like a couple of flux, you know, spaces in here. Uh, like this is um, the um, Edmund uh, Arc. KE eyepiece, the 28 millimeter, the spacewalk. If you're not familiar, look it up. It's a pretty cool eyepiece to kind of, you know, check out. I've got a little space here for, you know, like spare batteries and that type of deal. This, you know, like area here, this is kind of my flex area. Sometimes I put different stuff in here. A lot of times I will have a diagonal in here. This is a two inch diagonal, you know, kind of hanging out here. Uh, headband flashlight. These are really cool for setting up and breaking down. Um, you know, if you're at star parties, though, you know, do be careful with these because they are kind of annoying if you're like talking to somebody and there's a light, even if it's a red light, you know, shining in their face, they probably won't like you too much. So, you know, be respectful of people. Eye patch, I've talked about eye patches before. I'll actually have a link to this specific one in the video. This is an awesome one. Um, I I've got like several of them. Um, come on now, my AVT Astro cards. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, when I'm at start parties and I'm talking to people or whatever, you know, like they, you know, and I suggest like, you know, like some of the content that I've made, I'll, you know, give people those. Um, and then, you know, finally get into uh, the filters. So filters wise, I have some color filters in here. And again, this is another video that I'm linking up in the description above. Um, I also have um, all of my light pollution filters. So I've got a, a H beta, um, an O3 filter, UHC, and just the deep sky filter. Um, so anyway, uh, you know, quite a few different two inch uh, eyepiece filters in there. Alrighty, so having kind of gone through the eyepiece case, you know, what I kind of like to have in my eyepiece case, you know, the gear that I consider to be essential, especially again, I use this a lot for going to star parties. So this is, you know, the, you know, like one thing that I always bring with me. Uh, let's get down to the Astro Cave and kind of check out how to organize or how I like to organize all of my uh, telescope accessories and cases. Alrighty guys, welcome down to the Astro Cave. So let's check this out. This is the moment we've all been waiting for, checking out all the cases, right? All right, so the way that I like to organize my cases, obviously there's a billion different ways to do it. It's kind of by subject type or scope type, however you want to, you know, like to say it. So again, that's the eyepiece case that we already looked at. My next one here is my three inch setup. So this is uh, the Explore Scientific three inch 100 degree field of view. I only have a couple of different scopes that support this eyepiece. So, I mean, you know, it makes no sense for me to put this in this case, uh, besides to take up like half the case. Um, and then I have, I actually have a couple of different diagonals that I use for, you know, that eyepiece. But anyway, my diagonal usually lives in there. Next case is for my big dog, you know, that guy that's sitting right over there. Um, so basically, you know, I've got the finder scope that I actually usually don't want to use with the, I've got like the collimating eyepiece, the hand controller, the charger for it, basically everything I need to run the scope. Um, and then one other thing that I did want to kind of point out real quickly is this guy here. So you're like, what is this? Well, basically this is a little case that I have that I grab for, you know, like really quick observing sessions when I'm not using the batter zoom, and a lot of times I am, but this has, you know, currently it's got my Televue Plossils in there, you know, there's four eyepieces in there. Uh, sometimes I put other stuff in there. Um, uh, in a lot of cases, guys, you know, even though I have that big old case, right, that has like all the, you know, fancy accessories, it's just too heavy. Matter of fact, let's check it out. All right, so my bathroom scale, and this is the eyepiece case. Let's see, I've never even weighed this before. Let's see how much it weighs. All right, guys, so check this out. 31 pounds. So in a lot of cases, that's why I do not use, you know, this case um, for, you know, like quick observance sessions. And actually, you know, quite frankly, at home, a lot of times I do not use it. I either use the batter zoom or, you know, like one of my small little cases that I'll put like an eyepiece or two in and, you know, I'm good to go. Alrighty guys, welcome back. So hopefully you guys found that kind of interesting of you know how I organize my you know accessories. I've been in the hobby for about 25 years. You know, this is the way that I like to do it. You know, hopefully it'll kind of help you out. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or anything like that, I'll leave them in the thing below. For all my normal viewers uh, that have sent me thanks and super thanks and comments, I really do appreciate that guys. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.